It's one of the great landmarks of history. The Parthenon in Athens, constructed in the 5th century BC, still stands as the symbol of the cultural and political heights reached by the classical world. But it is today also at the center of a very modern debate over who holds claim to a set of marble friezes that once adorned the structure. Making up more than half of the original artwork, the disputed sculptures have been part of the collection of the British Museum in London for nearly 200 years. Depicting warriors, horses, gods, and mythical creatures, they're known as the Elgin Marbles, named for Thomas Bruce, the Earl of Elgin, who in 1801, as the British ambassador to the Ottoman Empire, which then ruled Greece, had the friezes cut from the Parthenon and shipped back to England. But to contemporary Greeks, they're known as the Parthenon Marbles, and in a dramatic move in its long fight to reclaim the sculptures, the Greek government set about to build the new Acropolis Museum as a hoped-for permanent home that would reunite the fragments today divided between London and Athens. That museum has just opened, for now displaying its original pieces alongside replicas of those housed in the British Museum. We have our own debate now with James Cuno, the president and director of the Art Institute of Chicago and author of the recent book, Who Owns Antiquity? Museums and the Battle Over Ancient Heritage. And Christopher Hitchens, columnist for Vanity Fair and author of the book, The Parthenon Marbles, The Case for Restitution. Christopher Hitchens, you've been arguing for the return for a long time. You visited the new museum. How does its existence move the argument now? Well, of the many arguments picked up and discarded down the years by the British government for holding on to one half, approximately one half, of a piece of sculpture that's carved as a single unity, uh, one argument has been um, the Greeks don't have anywhere proper to put them, even if we did give them back. Uh, with the opening of the museum, uh, two things have happened. One is there is a place, uh, very fine, well-designed, clean, well-lighted space for them, and second, that you can see uh, the, the marbles displayed as they would be if they were together. And just to explain so it, that... It, 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 creates, yeah. it creates a demand for what I would call not restitution, as my book does, but reunification. And just to explain that, the museum is putting in replicas to show what it would look like if whole, yes. correct? So and and the, yeah. the, the, the relevant floor, I, I won't go on too long, but the relevant floor is exactly aligned with the Parthenon that's on the, on the, uh, on the hill just above, which you can see from the gallery, and the frieze, the, the pediment, and the metopes, the panels, are all arranged as they would be if you could see them all together. So it creates in any visitor, I think, a, a great hunger to see what the real thing would look like. So, James Cuno, what is the argument for keeping it in the British Museum at this point? Well, a number of arguments, but let me go back just to that one. The argument for reunification of these things is an argument for reunifying them anywhere. They needn't be there since they aren't going to be on the Parthenon itself, uh, but rather are going to be themselves if they were to be brought back together, together in another place outside the Parthenon. They could be outside the Parthenon in London as well as in Athens. The British Museum places them in the context of, of, the, of the world's culture. We have to remember that the, um, the Parthenon that we're talking about is a Parthenon that existed for only a few hundred years. The Parthenon and, and the Acropolis and, and Athens itself came under the Roman Empire for some 700 years and after that the Byzantine Empire for 900 years in which the Parthenon was a church. It was Our Lady of Athens. And then after that, for 375 years, it was part of the Ottoman Empire in which it was a mosque. So this idea of restoring the Parthenon is a, an idea of restoring uh, a, a fantasy of a building by having removed from that building all the accretions, historical accretions of thousands of years of its history to restore something to what is an imagined uh, monument, a monument that is going to forever be uh, a fragmentary relic. Go ahead, Mr. Hitchens. I know you want to come back there. Apparently, the fact that it would be in Athens, in no, a museum, that doesn't that mean they have the to be in Athens the, to be of the Acropolis is nothing to do. The, 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 it's the light, the space, the air of Greece is, according to you, completely irrelevant. That's, a, That's the a, first point I'd like to make. Second, it's a romantic, it's a lovely romantic. Secondly, the, we're not talking about re, we're not talking about rebuilding the Parthenon. I'm sorry if you came here under that misapprehension. We're talking about the uh, reunification of the sculpture of the Parthenon. That was carved but, but, but as, a, that as a narrative anywhere. as a narrative in stone uh, that makes no sense to uh, keep in two separate pieces at opposite ends of the European Union. 
Mr. Kino, you're making a case for the encyclopedic, so-called, or universal museum as pulling a lot of things together and giving us one place to go see them. Why, why, is, th why is that a good as opposed to returning them to the place, their original home, and as Mr. Hitchens says, one aesthetic whole? Because I think the British Museum, Museum restores the complicated, diverse context of culture itself to these, these, these sculptures. Uh, you have to realize that the monument that we're looking at right now, a nationalist monument to the modern state of Greece, was created in 1930 and 34, 1830 and 1834 when the new state had its king, which was a, a Prince Otto from Bavaria, and who had hired his father's favorite architect, Leo von Klenze, to now conceive of a master plan for the restoration of the Acropolis. And Leo von Klenze began by removing...